back over to Miss Julie J. Your next guest tonight is the fantastic Kelly Harrington. How's your man's dad working? The what? How's your man's dad working? How's me what? How's your man's dad working? How's your man's your dad working? Uh, uh, me mother's dead, me father's unemployed. <laughs> are you. Uh, are you a boxer? Yeah. Is that how, where I know you from? Yeah. Uh, can you remind me again of what happened that you're in, <laughs> that you're in the news uh, most recently for? Um, the World Championships. Yeah. I was out in India in November, uh, and I became world champion. That was phenomenal. Uh, <laughs> I remember... Uh, I remember watching that, and I, I can't remember what it was that moved me so much about it. Can you tell us a bit of your backstory? Because I, 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 I remember when that happened, b being very taken uh, by you and your story. Can you tell me about it? I'm 29 now, but I've been boxing since I am um, roughly 14, 15. And living in the shadows for many years and not getting the opportunities that I was getting. And eventually I got to go out to the World Championships. I've been training and I working at the same time and everything. So I yeah. um, got to go out to the World Championships in 2016. And I got myself a, a silver medal then. And from there, people started to like, take me a bit more serious. So I um, just kept carrying on and getting European medals and then dropped the weight to 60 kilos, which is Olymp an Olympic weight. Yeah. And got a gold medal in the World Championships. Just gone. Yeah. Massive, massive thing. But the feeling of it is just amazing for all the work that you put in. To finally, because like, I mean, you're knocking on the door for years and years, like, and people doubting you for years and saying, oh, she's good, but like, you know, she's not that good. Like, um, lucky enough, I never listened to any of them, though. I just kept going. And I don't know, here I am now, like. So all those, what were you working at while you were training? I'm still working. I'm still uh, working in St. Vincent's Hospital in Fairview. It's a psychiatric hospital. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm a, a household worker, so... Um, I give out the dinners and that to the patients, uh, or I could be cleaning. So today I was in, I was scrubbing toilets this morning. So, you know, so it, it goes from the highest down to that, like, but it keeps you, it keeps you grounded and I love it. Absolutely love it. Does that, does that bother you, the work <clears throat> you have to do? No, like I'm on funding now. So I'm on the top bracket funding now. Um, so by right, I don't actually have to, to work anymore. Yeah. Well, it's my, uh, it's me escape from boxing and it's taking me back to more normality. Isn't that great? Like, I go into a psychiatric hospital and it's taking me back to normality. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I suppose in a, in a psychiatric hospital, nobody's pretending to be anything other than exactly, what they are. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So I fit right in. <laughs> How did you end up uh, getting a job in a psychiatric hospital? Um, I left my CV in, I, I just left my CV in and, um... Centra I think, Psychiatric I think, Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought, I, I just left CV and I didn't get a job at the start and then I got a, a letter a few weeks later saying, um, I got an interview, so I went up and, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. There you go, there's 10 hours every two weekends and just from that then I was getting called in all the time to... Cover here, cover there. And what, what was when you got hired? What was the what was what was the work? Household, so cleaning. It was cleaning. But now I'm on. I, I just give out the dinners now. But I also do a bit of cleaning. If like if someone phones in sick and if I'm not training, like I'll I'll go in and I'll put the hours in. It's, it's it's what I like to do. Like uh, I don't know. It just feels like I'm going in to visit people really because I don't know whether much work gets done at all. You know, like, yeah. to be honest with you, but I love it. Like, and, what, and what, I love the patients because the ward that yeah. I'm on, there's like nine patients on that ward, and they're like permanent patients. So I know them all, and they all know me, and we're, we're literally like family. So it's great. Uh, what are they like? <laughs> um. 
they're very supportive. Uh, they'll be always watching me. Um, I had my homecoming there um, when I come back from the World Championships and um, they were all sitting front row and they were straight up to the stage and they were told, like, don't get, on, don't get any of these in the telly or on the paper or anything, you know? <laughs> Next of all, he's up and he's like, give me a look at that medal, quick, give me a look, give me a look. And he's pulling it from around my neck and I'm like, oh, uh. God, you know, like, and... Like, he's coming in. I come in into work then the week later and he comes up and he's like, Kelly, I was like, yeah. He goes, got free coffee last week. And I was like, did you? He goes, I think he notes me from off the telly. And I was like, there you go, you're famous. You yeah. know, it's like, it's great, it is, it's great, you know. So so they love it. Like, they, they'll they be watching this now and they'll be absolutely buzzing. And the show is big in psychiatric hospitals. <laughs> Uh, can you tell me a bit more about about the about the patients in the hospital and, and uh, um, what, like, what what are they suffering from or what's their all, like all different kinds of things like schizophrenia, um, bipolar, loads of different things. I wouldn't know what each patient is suffering from. You know, like I just know that they're suffering, um, and I'm like out of everyone they they're. They're pretty all right with me, the patients, yeah. and you know, because I'm not giving them their, their their medication or anything, or taking them and giving them showers or anything like that. Um, I'm coming in and I'm handing them out cigarettes and <laughs> what have you, you know, like and chocolates and crisps and fizzy drinks and stuff. So they like I don't know whether they're glad that I'm a world champion or just that I'm there giving them <laughs> sweets and treats and what have you, you know, like. But uh, they're, they're do, they, do some of them think that you might be another patient? Do you know what? They probably do. Here's our one that thinks she's a wolf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Into right, weekly Kelly, fix. I right. know <laughs> oh, I'm mad, but I'm not that mad. <laughs> oh, no, the crack does be great though. We do yeah. have great crack in there. Like it's, uh, you can just, you can. Be yourself, really, you know, like, and <laughs> I suppose. No, totally, because we're I, all, like, I don't care what anybody says. Everybody's a bit, has a bit, like, of mental issues, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. <laughs> I've more issues than Vogue magazine, for God's sake, you know, like, yeah. so it suits me to go in there, <laughs> brings me back down to, to earth and keeps my feet planted firmly on the ground. Yeah. Um, when you were uh, growing up, uh, who was the person who, directed you most in the boxing? Like, I have, I come from, I have three brothers. Um, they would have been sporty. One of my brothers lives in Iceland. He's a soccer coach. And, I mean, like, I was hanging around and getting up to all kinds of mischief. Like, I was the worst possible child you could ever imagine. And Why is that not? Explain just, to me. Just doing things that I shouldn't be doing. Like what? Getting into trouble. Um, Robin? All kinds of things, drinking, uh, fighting. So I suppose I could always fight anyway. So yeah. I knew I was good at it. So, uh, I mean, I knew I had to change and I couldn't keep putting my mat and that through what I was putting them through, going around looking for me every night. Where is she? What's she doing now? All that kind of stuff. So in, in the community, there's a great setup with youth clubs, boxing clubs and all that kind of stuff. Mm. So they helped me and I got into a boxing club and... And I just, I just, the discipline from, from boxing is just amazing. Without that, like, I, God knows where I would be now. I could be in prison or on drugs or anything, you know. <clears throat> Are there uh, girls that you knew that when you were growing up that ended up that way? Yeah, there would be a few girls that would, would be on drugs now. Um, not many of them. Many of them have uh, kids and stuff, you know, like, and moved on and have families and stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of doing my thing. I kind of don't, I don't go out or anything anymore, really. Like, not, I'm, not, I'm not a loner by any means, but I'm just very driven and I, I have me, me sights set on what I want. And, I mean, like, I did have a pretty good, uh, like, when I was younger, I, I, I lived me life that I should have been living when I was, like, 20-ish back then so like I don't need to be going out all the time you don't feel as if you've lost out in anything like no I don't I haven't you know what I mean like and I mean there's life after boxing as well so yeah I can catch up on all that kind of crack when I'm finished but I have something to do I'm on a mission now and, and what, what, what is, what's that mission 
Um, want to try and get to the Olympics. So this year is the qualifying year for the Olympics. Um, so try and qualify for for Tokyo. And if I qualify for that, like Jesus, I don't know. But I don't probably have a heart attack or something. Though, but that's that's my fear. Like, but if if I qualify, that'd be amazing. Like, it'd be great for for me, for my family, for my club, um, and for the Northeast Inner City as well. I'm an ambassador in there now uh, for the Northeast Inner City, and it'd be just absolutely brilliant. What do you have to do in order to qualify? Um, the World Championships are later this year in. Siberia? Siberia, yeah. So I have to come in the top four. And, I mean, everybody keeps saying, oh, so you're world champion, you know, like... And I'm like, yeah, but, like, I'm world champion. I'm the target, like, you yeah. know, I'm the one that people want to be. So people are going to be training to beat me. So it's going to get harder. So it's it's going to be hard, like, but I'm I'm putting in the work and... Who out there is good now in your weight division? The Russian... The what, Thai girl. What were their names? Do you know? Couldn't tell you. Uh, Anastasia, I think. Something like that, yeah. Something, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Slap around with the head, stupid bitch, yeah. <laughs> Some Thai girl's coming to me, box the head of you. What are you talking about? Jesus Christ, why sound like that? <laughs> no, you don't. No, no. I, I'm only able to do one double oh, accent. Yeah. I've, no, I've no up and down in terms of range. Jesus Christ, I have to go home and check myself. <laughs> um, so there's a Russian girl? Uh, Finnish girl, and then the girl from Thailand. Um, I met her in the final of the World Championship, so she's, she's, she's good. Like She hits like a horse. Mm. She, she looks like one as well, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, she she's good. Like they're they're all good. Like they're everyone is a threat, really. Like you know, yeah. when you're when you're going in there, you have to be hundred percent like mentally prepared. You have to be like that's one of the biggest uh, aspects of the game is uh, mentally. Like you can be fit and you can be everything, but if you're not mentally prepared, everything is off. So I eyeball in your opponent. Yeah, just. But I don't even know if, if, if it, like, they eyeball me back and it doesn't have any effect on me, do you know what I mean? So I don't know whether I'm having any effect on them. Yeah. But, uh, but there's a pair of you at it anyway. There's a pair of us at it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I was told that I looked like Dark Vader when I'm walking to the ring. Like, and I was like, well, thanks very much, you know? Like, but I don't know, I think I just kind of switch off. Uh, there's all, like, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's just, it's, a, it's, a, it's the best feeling ever, like, it's... It's such an adrenaline when you're walking there. I'd be walking, my coach is up there, like, uh, and I'd be, I'd be saying to Noel, like, no, and you say, what? I go, I think I'm gonna fucking shit myself. And he'll say, This is what you're, you're walking right. into the ring. This is I'm walking to the ring, like, he'd be like, no, you're not. I'm going, I think I need to go to the toilet. He's like, no, you don't need to go, Kelly. And, and I'm like, right, I don't need to go. I don't need to go. I'm ready, I'm ready for this. And I'd be talking to myself, like, and <laughs> I'd be like, I'm ready for this. And I'd be hitting myself, and I'd be like, come on, let's go. When you get into that ring, you forget about what you were at the being saying two seconds ago. Like, it yeah. is crazy. Like, it's crazy. It's the best feeling ever, except for when you get hit in the face. <laughs> <laughs> don't hit the face. Don't hit the face, please, please. Yeah, no. Oh, she's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, talk, talk me through a minute of a fight in terms of... Why do you like that kind of stuff? Well, <laughs> well I, I'm just fascinated by because you very rarely get to hear boxers being specific about... So can you talk me through that, just that thing of what, what, what you're throwing when you're throwing it? If you make a mistake in the first minute, you still have another two minutes to, to, like, to correct that mistake. Now, now what, what would be classified as a mistake? Getting hit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, do you know, like, so what hand you right with? Uh, I write with my mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I write with my right hand. So you'd, you'd be with your, you'd have your left hand forward. So if you turn your left at me, like, and I, I, so I move down, <laughs> I'll try not to, <laughs> and I slipped outside. Like, so I'm going like that. Yeah, I could, come, I could just slightly move out and then just come across like that. And it, my, my chin, is it? Yeah. Right on the money, like. Yeah. And then like, I could be gone again, or else I could wait until you throw this and then side around the side then and catch it and you're just literally punching tin air then yeah we could try it sometime you're more than welcome to come to the club <laughs> oh, fuck, I take it um, <laughs> um, 
Oh, you got ten men hurry. So it's it's a remarkably disciplined game. It's uh, that that's that's everything. It is discipline. It's it's everything. That's that's how I'm still boxing. Is discipline because I need that in my life. Like I need discipline. You know, like it's so boxing gives you that. Like you know, all this hard training, all this hard fighting, and still going into the psychiatric hospital mm-hmm. to clean up. And, God, you wouldn't want to know what and, I have to clean up. But, <laughs> I know, but to, to clean up and to talk to people and to befriend outsiders. And like you said earlier on, you don't know what they're suffering from, but you know they're suffering. Yeah. You know, it's, But everybody's suffering, aren't they? Like, yeah, in some way, sure. shape or form, like everybody is suffering. Like, yeah. But it's just it's about how you manage it, isn't it, really? And I, I think as well as that, like... Uh, for me, boxing is my medication. You know, like <laughs> if I didn't have boxing, like I don't know what I'd be doing. Like you're uh, a remarkable uh, woman, and it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thanks very much. Right. Thank you. 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 Naturally, as we're a fish family, fish was always centerpiece at Christmas time. This year, we're bringing a new product to the market, our smoked royal fillet of salmon. This is a really exceptional product that we're extremely proud of. The piece of salmon comes from the most succulent, tender part of the fish. It's delicate, it's rich, and it's got the beautiful undertones of the bourbon cast smoking. At Christmas time, it's so important to have the best food on your table. This signature taste smoked royal fillet of salmon is exclusive to Super Value.